Hello, and welcome back to another Life Chat video. I'm Jennifer Mata McMahon. I wanted to share with you the awesomeness of the month of March and highlight all the wonderful things that have happened this month and what I've been up to. So let's get into it. So I have my iPad here with my everything I do I put into my Google Calendar and I have different calendars um, set up so if you look at it it has different colors and I don't know if this is gonna this is not probably not gonna not, not to show up but if you look at my calendar um, you see I have green is for uh, work related things and a lot of a lot of it is green uh, blue is for personal stuff a yellow is for things that have to do with health um, exercise diet those kinds of things uh, purple has to do with spiritual things, so all of my meditation sessions are in purple. And um, anything related to spirituality is in, is in purple. And then uh, orange is the calendar that I share with Mike. And red is fun things. And it's, it's not very encouraging that I don't have a lot of red in my calendar because there's not a lot of fun things. But, I mean, work is fun, and it's filled with work, so there's always that. So March. March uh, has been a really interesting month. Um, one thing that happened at the beginning of March, the first day of March, is that I did, um, I committed myself to hashtag no sugar March. It's been hard. It's been really hard. Um, but I've done really well. Today is the 29th of March, so March is almost over, and I have not had any sugar, any desserts, any added sugar, any um, all of the things that I was like hooked on, like ice cream, cookies, gummy bears, chocolate, cake. You name it. Anything that was sweet, in essence, um, has been cut out of my diet for the month of March. It's been successful in the sense that I've kept to it. I have not had any of that. But um, it hasn't been successful in the sense that I have not stopped craving sugar. I could easily go for something sweet as we speak right now. And I'm actually counting the days for April 1st so that I can actually eat something sweet and I have some gummy bears in my cupboard that have been taunting me all month that I haven't been able to eat so I'm very much looking forward to being able to eat sugar again um, and it has not been successful in the weight area as well because um, or either because I haven't lost much weight I have lost maybe I've lost exactly two and a half pounds, um, maybe three and a half pounds if you count my like heaviest day lately um, or in the past two months or so, but that's it. And that's not a lot. I mean, three and a half pounds or two and a half pounds, that's just irrelevant. I did notice that I kind of um, puffed down, so the puffiness, the... Um, sugar tends to make you to to swell you up and that have I have noticed that that has gone down and I noticed that the first week of, of cutting sugar out um, but other than that nothing so if I really want to lose weight I'm gonna have to cut sugar out and carbs because I've been eating carbs through March, and I think that that's the whole reason why I haven't really lost weight is because I'm still eating carbs. But I just didn't want to go cold turkey and cut everything out. Um, the other thing I think also is contributing to not losing weight is Coke Zero. I'm still drinking Coke Zero, and I, I think I, I drink it more now or I have been drinking it more during the month month of March because I'm not eating sugar and that's um, it's artificially sweetened so it doesn't have sugar in it but it's tastes sweet and so I think that has been um, keeping me <laughs> from the edge of going crazy without sugar 
Um, so yeah, so I think those two things, I mean, if I were to seriously delve into losing weight, I would have to cut sugar, carbs, and eventually give up Coke Zero, which is, is right now, not in my radar of things that I want to do. So we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen in, in April. I think I'm going to um, allow myself to have sugar because I've really been craving it, but maybe cut down on the carbs and, 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 and swap and see if, if that will help. If I eat sugar but not carbs, I don't know. Then we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so another thing that happened in March that was really fun was that Mike came to visit, and he came to visit the weekend of... Um, that I was going to become a U.S. citizen. So those two things happened at the same time. So Mike was here. We did a lot of fun stuff together. We got to go see a basketball game, a UMBC basketball game, and root for the for the retrievers. Um, and we uh, went out uh, some. We worked on some projects as well that I, I had to do. Um, here or wanted to do here um, and um, and then on Monday we went in to um, my naturalization ceremony and I became a US citizen so that happened as well that was another thing that was really cool this month is that I am now um, a dual citizenship person um, because I'm still a Venezuelan citizen but I'm also a US citizen so that was that was cool. The other thing that happened in March when Mike left is he took Max with him. So for these past two weeks, I have not had Max with me, and Max is with Mike. Um, so that also I think put a wrench into my whole trying to lose weight. Because what happened when Max was here was I would walk him in the morning, I would walk him in the afternoon, long walks. I mean, we would go for at least half an hour each time and um, I'm not doing that anymore so I'm, I get I get no exercise when Max is in here in terms of walking I have been going to yoga more often during March so that has helped um, and I started going to core yoga um, a couple times I, I need to go more often it's just that they're Monday nights and sometimes Monday nights I can't make it to yoga so um, I have been going to the Saturday mornings classes that are more about stretching hips and lower back, I think it is, so it's great for de-stressing, um, but the core one is the one that's really good for exercising, and I have been doing that one, again, just a couple times, I haven't been going regularly, um, I'm going to try to, to, to do that again, um, or to get on that bandwagon again, um, but yeah, so... So that happened as well. Maxi went back to Chicago with Mike, and um, and I stopped going for my morning and afternoon walks. So there's that. The other great thing that happened in March is I went to a play conference. So I presented my paper and made some great connections and met some awesome people and went to really inspiring uh, conference uh, talks and presentations. Um, there were some keynote speakers that were awesome, and I have some ideas of some sort of areas of um, inquiry that I want to pursue, and people that I want to connect with and maybe do things with, and people that I want to visit and see what closely what they're uh, doing, especially those that have lab schools. I um, found out that some of them do and made connections with them, and I've also followed up with them to see if they can... Um, spread out the spirituality survey that I'm working on with my colleagues and see if we can get some more responses on that end. So that was really good that that happened, that I went to that conference and had all those cool things happening at, at it. Um, the other thing that happened in March is that, and this happened when Mike was here, was we started looking at houses again. So uh, that weekend that Mike was here, we went, one of the days we went and saw several houses. And none of them were the greatest fit. There was one that potentially could have been a good fit, but um, the price was high for, I think, for what it was. And it wasn't, it didn't have everything that we wanted. Um, 
so we just we we didn't you know make an offer but the following weekend the weekend that i came back from the play conference um mike was not here um that weekend and i went by myself to see a couple houses that i found that i thought were interesting ones particularly because it was in the neighbor na neighborhood that i like and i went to see it and that was it it was it was weird because i've been to many houses i want to say i've been between 60 and 70 houses i've seen since august to this point and this was one of those houses that i walked in and said oh, this is great this is it right so um it, it's a small house it's um you it's deceivingly small because you see it from the outside and you figure oh this is a this house is tiny but you go in and it, it has a really good distribution um, and it uh, or floor plan I think you say distribution in Spanish in English it would be floor plan right so it has a really good floor plan and um, it's a rancher so all of the bedrooms and one full bathroom is on the the top floor so you come in and, and there's a living room there's a kitchen there's a dining room and the three bedrooms and a bathroom and it's all upstairs and then when you go downstairs to the basement the basement is fully finished and in the basement there's two more bedrooms uh, there's a big uh, master bedroom with a really sweet master bathroom and um, there is another room that has a half bathroom downstairs and then there's an area that has sort of like a wet bar with a uh, wine fridge and, an, and just like a lounging area and off of it there's um, sliding doors that lead to the backyard and lead to this like sunroom porch area and the backyard and on the first floor there's like a little balcony a little deck that comes out um, it's really nice. I, I think that it's a flip. It's a house from the 1950s and they did a really good job at renovating it. Um, the quality of the craftsmanship is, is high. I didn't have any concerns with it, um, with anything. And um, so what we put in an offer and the offer was countered and we sort of negotiated and met them in the middle. Um, and they accepted it so we are under contract for this house and actually today was the inspection and we I went in um, so Mike hasn't seen it hasn't been here and I, I went in with the with the realtor with my broker and the inspector and and um, he actually went in the inspector had works with his son so both of them were there inspecting the house and doing all you know like and the son is younger so he was the one who went on the roof and inspected all that jazz and um yeah so there's a little list of things that uh, we need to get back to the seller with and hopefully they'll fix them and then the final walkthrough everything will be <laughs> done um i even met my future potential neighbor and she has a dog that looks just like Charlie. The dog's a girl, um, but I saw her and I kind of did a double take. I was like, I, what? A young Charlie. It's, it was incredible. Um, I hope, <laughs> I hope my Maxie makes friends with her. Um, and I know that for dogs, it's more about the, the, sm the smell, the scent and not necessarily what they look like, but I think that, I, I mean, I did a double take. I'm sure that Max, will, like, what, is this Charlie? Um, I know Maxie has been missing Charlie and he looks for him and I I can imagine him being over the moon and he if he was reunited with Charlie, but who knows, maybe this little dog, this neighbor dog, is, her name is Lucy, the dog, and, um, Maybe Maxie and Lucy will be pals. Who knows? Um, so yeah, so that's very exciting. That's another very, very exciting thing that happened in March is that we found a house. And if everything goes well, the closing would be by the end of April. Um, so keep your fingers crossed that this time it'll work. And um, 
so yeah, that's that's the other thing that happened in in March. Um, really, really excited about that. The other thing that happened uh, during March was spring break. So we had a week off of work. Um, and um, we also had this just past week we, when we were back from spring break, we had staffing, which is one-to-one um, uh, -one advising with, with each of our students. And we didn't hold classes either on spring break, obviously, because it was spring break, but uh, or staffing weeks. So I've had two weeks of um, focusing on other things work-wise that are not necessarily classes so I need to get on it for the next week but um, what that allowed me to do was to focus on other like projects and collecting data for one of my projects my dual language project and um, writing up um, manuscript for my spiritual survey spirituality project so that was good because I got a little sort of breather of teaching and that opened up a little bit of time to do other things. So that also happened in March, and I'm glad that that was the case because it, it worked out well um, in terms of timing for what I need. I still have to this week, and I have a ton of grading to do, and I also have a ton of um, research project-related uh, reading and writing that I need to do, or revising and, and resubmitting and revising chapters and sending them back and that sort of thing. Um, but it was a very productive, I feel, uh, work month as well. And so I just wanted to share with you all of these things that have happened in March because I feel like March was a really good month in terms of productivity, in terms of work, uh, making progress in work. Um, but also it was a great month because we found our house, because we Mike came to visit, because I became a U.S. citizen, because um, I was able to nip in the bud a bit, a bit my cravings for sugar. You know, like it was it, it, it was a good month. And I think that um, I was excited to share this because one, I wanted to share it, but two, I wanted to um, document it and have it be, you know, like March of 2019 was a good month, um, was a good month. Also in March is my niece Sophie's birthday, so I guess it's always, every year it's a good, it's a good month because of that. But on top of that, there are all of these other things that happened as well that were just awesome sauce. Um, oh, the other thing that happened in March was that I was able finally to go get a mani-pedi. I had been without a pedicure since I think January, since maybe maybe December. December was the last time I got a pedicure and I was in dire need of one. But I also um, got a manicure while I was there and this is my first dip manicure. So I explored or tried out um, dip manicure for the first time and it's been over a week and look how good my nails look right it's like they look good they look good um, and apparently it's supposed to last for three weeks so it's perfect because um, I get to travel uh, next week I'm going to Canada for a conference and I get to not be worried about my nails chipping or me needing to retouch them or doing them right before I leave so they look good throughout the trip because if they continue to look like this for at least one more week or two because they're supposed to last three weeks I'll be golden it'll be it'll be great so yeah that was it that's all that happened in the month of March and um, I just wanted to share. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.